LinkedIn presents. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Stefan Dubois about how to automate your expertise. Stefan Dubois, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you, John, for having me. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Belgium. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about how to automate your expertise. This is a a general concept that I think is really powerful, one that I'm excited to explore with you today. As we get started, I wanted to share Stefan's bio with everybody. Stefan Dubois is the founder and CEO of Pointer Pro, an assessment software platform that helps professional services companies to automate their advisory processes. Stefan is passionate about the use of technology to build professional relationships with people at scale. Before founding Pointer Pro, Stefan worked for 15 years in several consulting companies as a consultant, project manager, and account manager. And I could go on, but I'm going to pause there. Stefan, anything else you would like to highlight for me or the audience before we dive on into the conversation? Not really. Like when um, back when I was a consultant, um, I um, I have seen that most consulting companies are already pretty or doing a pretty good job when it comes to automation um, in the back office, like um, systems to automate like uh, invoicing, timesheets, and, and stuff like that. Um, but when it comes to the um, actual client work, um, giving the advice, um, working with clients. Um, then there is not so much op- uh, automation uh, yet, um, and and that's something that we want to tackle um, with uh, with with Point of Pro. Um, it's automating um, really the advisory process, the core process of what the consultant uh, actually does. Yeah, well, and I think we all recognize the power of automation. Uh, for one thing, most people don't want to be stuck doing all the these little nitty gritty wrote, you know, repetitive kinds of tasks that just seem to kind of suck up your time uh, and don't allow you to to do the creative stuff that you'd rather be doing. Uh, So automation, you know, it's it's like delegating, right? You can just delegate that, get it off your plate so you can focus on other things. Um, But but when it's automated and you're utilizing software, uh, various technologies to do it, um, then you really just up the ante for the overall efficiency and productivity, not just for you as an individual, but for your whole team. And so it's a no brainer in this day and age that we want to seek automation, whatever that looks like in a, in a manufacturing setting, we're going to have, you know, uh, robotics and and various things like that. In an office setting, we're going to utilize um, various softwares, technology, AI, et cetera, um, so that we can make sure that we're getting the most out of our people and and setting them loose, setting them free to do what they do best and not waste their time doing the stuff that easily the computer can do, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the most um, like transactional um, advice processes, um, the, the ones that are repetitive and always I'm not saying that they always deliver the same advice, but deliver um, the, um, maybe different advice, but um, according to the same model, according to the same logic or methodology um, that is um, always used um, to um, to give um, over and over, like advice over and over to different clients uh, in those kind of situations. Yeah. 
yeah. um, automations, uh, automation is, is really been beneficial. Yeah. Well, and I think of in the HR space specifically, if we talk about that for a moment, the evolution of HR from personnel management to really transactional HR, you know, these, these behind the scenes, you know, payroll stuff and just various technical stuff that you just have to do to make sure that the, the organization hums along with the, in terms of the, the workers, um, over time, what we've seen is a shift from personal management to transactional HR to now really a transformational HR approach, strategic HR, where we're allowing people to utilize their people expertise, their leadership, uh, their change management expertise to drive initiatives that are meaningful and impactful. And you, you let the computers do the transactional stuff, right? Um, or you, you set up self-service portals where employees can do a lot of that stuff on their own, where previously you needed full-time people who are dedicated solely just to do that and do the paperwork to help their employees you know, take care of everything that they need. So that's just within the HR uh, realm as an example. Um, but of course it could apply to marketing operations. Any, any uh, functional area of a business can find great efficiencies and, in, and productivity gains by fostering a climate where you adopt and adapt to the automations that are available. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit more. I mean, certainly at Pointer Pro, you have your own approach. So you, you Feel free to tell us more about that. Uh, but just generally speaking, when we talk about automation, how have you seen things shift and change over time, say over the last decade or so, in terms of the types of tools that are available, the types of automations that can help organizations uh, just be more efficient, more productive, and, and unleash their people to focus on what matters the most? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, when I, back when I was a consulting um, in consulting firms, um, we were responsible for um, implementing like this huge um, enterprise systems um, in uh, mostly a, a big uh, customers like uh, Nestle or Atlas Copco. Um, and yeah, that was really wall to wall automation like ERP systems, uh, CRM systems, customer relationship management systems. Um, and yeah, those projects were often multi year. Um, project multi-million also in, in terms of investment and um, I'm not saying that th those are I mean I, I would certainly recommend to do this again for these companies um, but the, the time between the start of an initiative and when it um, delivers the first results was quite considerable like in terms of years um, and now it has evolved like with SaaS software as a service uh, cloud computing um, to much uh, smaller uh, applications, um, which are still powerful, but which are interconnected um, and where you get um, yeah, quicker benefits. And, and it's, um, I mean, the, the, the customers also expect that. And I mean, they, they do rightfully expect so. Um, so now we are um, talking um, more about months um, when something uh, should deliver results. Um, of course, you cannot... Um, change the ERP system or, or a multinational company um, in, in, in months, uh, uh, I'm still realistic. Um, but you could start with like one division or one country or whatever, and then have already some benefits there and then go on with, uh, um, with, with the, the rest of the organization. So um, yeah, uh, by new technologies, um, yeah, the, the, the primary benefits of, of new technologies, I think that we can uh, can have fast results of, of these kind of initiatives. Yeah. And and where do you see AI fitting into all this? Of course, just in the last six months, you know, ChatGPT, BARD, um, and all the integrations and all the tools that people are creating, it, it seems like we've taken a huge leap forward in terms of, of automation in the last six months. Um, how does that fit into the work that you do at Pointer Pro? Uh, where do you see that taking us, say, in the next couple of years? There's still a lot of work to do be besides AI. There's still a lot of work to do um, by just um, automating human intelligence or like yeah. just via, without the artificial part, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. uh, putting uh, human intelligence and converting it into, an, uh, into a system. Um, and then let the system do the work. Um, that's the first thing. Um, but of course, I mean, the, the potential of, of AI is, is huge, I think. Um, and I think that um, yeah, for consultants of professional services, 
they will need to have um i i think in, on the longer term they, they would need uh, to have their own ai um yeah. that is um based on their own data um all the exper experience that they have um um built up in in the past um that should feed uh because ai needs data to become smarter yeah. of course yeah? um so the, all that ex experience and expertise should feed into an ai um uh, system which is of course proprietary um uh, to, to that uh, consulting company um and um th that should generate and like automatic advice um, to generate um, benefits for customers um, much faster than it is um, happening today. Um, yeah. For example, um, like a legal consultancy, if, if they have already had um, the, some, some similar cases um, in, in other countries or like uh, if it's a big organization, not everybody will know um, which, are the, which are different um, uh, experiences in, in the rest of the organization. Um, that um, is something that uh, could typically be um, be handled by AI, and 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 more powerful insights would be generated then. Um, then, uh, um, in in the case of of it, when a human would do that. Um, so, but there is still a, a lot of um, like uh, big um, like a significant uh, work to do there um, because we have now ChatGPT takes the whole internet as um, as as learning platform. Um, but similarly, I think uh, consulting companies should have their um, their data uh, as a learning platform and then outperform ChatGPT um, in in their specialization area. Well, yeah, I, th I think that's that's absolutely right. Um, and there's all sorts of security and data concerns related to that, right, uh, in terms of proprietary data within an organization. But every context is different. And so, you know, it's great having borrowed chat TPT with Internet um, as kind of the data input, right, uh, to drive the algorithm and, and to, to get good information back. But you're largely getting generic information back, right, because it's the the whole of the internet it's it's all of of the insights uh from all over different situations contexts industries specializations and so um the power of of util utilizing similar technology but training it specifically on your organization's data is really powerful because then you can come back with very detailed specific um completely relevant types of outputs uh, whereas, you know, chat GPT, sometimes you just get fairly generic sounding types of stuff that's not actually going to be helpful in your situation or in your context. Uh, so that's, it's really interesting to think about how that will continue to develop over time, what the security concerns are about that. And of course, mm. there's the ethical concerns around it too. And, and uh, how do you train the data that trains the AI? Of course, if it, if the data is biased in the first place, it's going to create a biased AI that's going to then perpetuate biases. Um, so all of this is the type of stuff we need to be thinking about from the AI perspective for sure. Um, but there's no question that it could be a great tool uh, in terms of increasing the automations and the efficiency and productivity of a team of an organization. But you also highlighted something that I think is really important. And that is before we even get to AI, there is so much automation that can be done um, just with human intelligence and and automating the the repetitive types of processes that we are doing already. If you're kind of a smaller business, maybe you haven't really leveraged the, these technologies as much, uh, it's really worth taking the time to explore the tools that are out there, um, connect with uh, people like Stefan, uh, with organizations like Pointer Pro, and, and figure out what you can do to really... Um, you know, hypercharge um, your productivity in your organization and, and free up and unleash the potential of your people to do the stuff that they're going to want to do the most anyways, the create the creativity, the, um, the, the, the critical thinking, the, the uh, strategic thinking and, and the innovative stuff that most people get excited about. Um, most people don't get excited about filling in a spreadsheet or, um, you know, trying to, to just keep track of, you know, requisitions and invoices or whatever like we can name a whole bunch of different types of things that frankly software can do 
uh, in most cases, very, very well. Um, you take out human error often <laughs> so that you don't have um, those types of problems. And it, it's it's just a win-win for everybody, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, what we also say is that like before um, automating um, the... Um, uh, these kind of advisory processes as a, as a consultant, HR consultant, or uh, can also be a consultant in, in other domains, that there's a couple of steps that you have to do um, prior to automating, yeah? because otherwise the automation will not work. So we always say there's three steps, um, basically. Um, and the first step is that as a consultant, you have to stop doing everything for everybody. Mm -hmm. If you if you're still doing that, <laughs> then you have to stop doing that. Um, you have to um, uh, specialize in a certain a certain service offering or, or maybe more than one, um, but um, not um, uh, shooting too too broad yeah, because that will that will hurt you. Um, so a couple of service offerings that you can specialize in. That's the first step. Then secondly. Um, for each of these um, service offerings, you should consider to go from time material, um, time material business model to fixed price uh, business model if you're not uh, doing it already. Um, because um, it's better for you, it's better for the client, it's better for the client because he knows what he's going to pay and what he's going to get. And it's better for you because um, if you have fixed price, then you can uh, apply efficiencies and then the efficiencies will return or re will result in uh, profitability increases. Whereas in time material efficiencies, if you can do the same work on less in less time, will just uh, result in less revenue, which you don't want. Yeah? So that's the second step, um, fixed price. And then the third step is to create a model, a quantitative model uh, for each of your service offerings. Um, and that is that could be very simple uh, maturity model, um, or it can be also more complex, of course. But if you have done like projects in, in one of the offerings, like over and over again, like at different uh, customers, then you have the model anyway. You you have it in your head. You you know um, the different performance levels and which questions to ask, and um, to know whether a new customer, for example, is um or is a beginner or is already quite advanced in in, in this specialization area. Um, for example, I'm always taking email marketing as an example. You could um, check um, whether um, if you're an email marketing consultant, um, whether people um, already collect emails for the first place. Yeah? And, and then, um, of course, um, you're not going to um, give them advice on how to do um, sophisticated um, newsletters if they don't collect emails in the first place. So the model is really designed for um, or intended to um, to determine the performance of a prospect or a customer and then give um, advice um, based on that performance level. And the advice will be different, of course, to someone, I mean, who is not collecting emails yet and someone who is already uh, very sophisticated and you will give different advice. Uh, so if you have done these three steps, then you can afterwards you can um, then put that model in a system like ours and um, then the system will give the advice automatically. But that's three um, other steps are required to do that. Yeah, that's excellent. And I'm wondering, as we um, think more about this, you, you start the process. So if you're not doing anything, start with those three steps, like you said, and, and then we can fine tune as we go and we can start to leverage different tools. What do you see as some of the biggest barriers, the, the, the biggest um, challenges that organizations, that leaders are facing as they're trying to think around these issues of automation, and how it's going to impact their teams? Um, I, I do think there's a, a a healthy level of fear that certain people have around automation, people, you know, team members feeling uh, concerned about losing their jobs because their jobs are going to be automated away um, and, and team leads, you know, having to deal with those dynamics. Um, that's just one example, but what, what are some of the types of challenges that you see um, organizations and leaders facing as they're trying to move down this path towards more appropriate automation? Yeah, perhaps the first one is that people, we have also conducted a study um, where we asked uh, these kind of questions on, on how they, um, um, yeah, what their thoughts were, were about uh, automation. And yeah, there's quite some that say like, 
uh, my job or like my work cannot be automated because like it's always different at different uh, customers the situation is different um, so the projects are always different um, there is no uh, uh, for that reason there's no automation possible so that's a challenge um, that is um, not true in the sense that of course like mm -hmm. the I mean the actual advice that you give and the work that you do for customers will be each time different but it's your um, task as a consultant to um, discover the model, which is like the commonalities, which are, um, yeah, uh, under under the hood, so to say, and and which are um, similar um, to um, to every every customer. Um, that is your responsibility, and if you stick to the the same service offering, then you will um, you will discover it after you have done uh, the same type of projects over and over again. Um, so that's the first thing. Like a second challenge is to um, the fear that um, the human interaction will um, will uh, disappear by automating. Yeah. Um, of course, if you automate the invoicing process and, and the timesheet process, um, that that is uh, like in the back office. But if you automate also like the advice uh, delivery, um, then yeah, the, the customer can already get advice to um, by like digitally by answering uh, questions and, and getting then a, an advice report as a result from from that um whereas in the past that that would be yeah done by consultants yeah um so um yeah what we that's uh, that's uh, that's an attention point i think um so that's a valid point what we say then is that yeah, the result of, of, of the first um, assessment uh, or the most transactional advice delivery, that result should be uh, then the next step discussed with the consultant in a face-to-face -face meeting. And then you you free up the time from the consultant um, for to do more uh, valuable stuff. And that relates also to your remark then to um, the consultant or people um, fearing to, um, to lose their job. We don't see that um, so often as a... Um, as, as an issue because we are in uh, the war for talent here in, in Europe, also in, in the US. Uh, consultancies, I've like, spoken with Deloitte uh, last week with a partner at Deloitte, um, they are all um, struggling to get people. Um, and um, yeah, the fact that you say to consultants that uh, transactional work will be taken out of their hands and, and then uh, given to a, to a system, to, to a specialized uh, software tool, I mean, they will not um, be opposed uh, to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's always something that we just have to navigate. And uh, in, in depending on the culture of your team um, and the personalities within your team, it may be more or less challenging. I do think it's important that we foster a culture of continuous improvement, continuous ongoing learning. And part of that means that we're constantly learning how to be more productive, more efficient, how to utilize the existing tools that are out there. And so if we have people that are resistant to that because they're scared about um, you know, the possibility of, of becoming irrelevant, that their jobs will go away, I mean, it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy because if you're not constantly learning you're almost guaranteeing that you will become irrelevant <laughs> and that your job mm -hmm. will go away. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're leaning into the new technologies, you're learning and growing, figuring out how to utilize them, what's going to happen is your job's not going to go away. You're going to become the rock star who's more productive and efficient, who then is freed up to do other cool stuff. And you'll, you'll have plenty of opportunity to contribute. Um, so people who are worried about um, losing their jobs due to automation, I think we're, I think, we're just thinking about it all wrong. If that's your concern, um, of course, will certain tasks be displaced um, and taken over by automation? Of course, that's always been the case um, since the the age of the industrial revolution, and now we're in um, the industrial revolution 4.0. You know, we're we're in the knowledge economy. We're in the the high tech economy. Um, we've always evolved, and we've always had to be adaptive and to learn continually uh, so that we stay relevant and and so as a team lead we just need to make sure that we're we're fostering that kind of an environment um so so that people know that yeah like continue to learn continue to grow continue to utilize these technologies stay more relevant because of it make more contributions because of it and then at the end of the day you know we just do better stuff we do better work um and we'll create more opportunities for ourselves not less 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, in our um vision, the um the professional services industry will transform into um not only services, but we think that every professional service company in the future will need to offer a um a digital tool to their customers, yeah, where their customers can log in and they can see um several things they can do three things basically um first is uh, self-assess their performance um and get uh, automated personalized advice that's the second thing um and the third thing um is monitor improvements um over time um so it's um i mean it's easier said than than done um but if you as a consultant uh, deliver that tool together with the services that you deliver um that will create a real competitive uh, differentiation and we want to um, offer that kind of tool um, to smaller consultancies also so that not only the Deloitte's and the um, uh, EYs and so um, can offer do have enough power to, um, to to develop these kind of digital tools but also smaller um, consultancies can um, use these tools and I mean that's of course um, why we exist also, but um, we want that digitalization is uh, results in democratization also. Um, that it's not only um, because of digitalization that only uh, the, the, the the investment is is uh, um, to 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 enter the like to create such this tool is, is is quite high and that that is only for the for the big ones uh, that that would be not uh, not a good not the world that we want to see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Stefan, this has just been a real pleasure. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, if people want to connect with me, I'm mostly active on uh, on LinkedIn. Um, so um, just um, yeah, send me a request. Always happy to um, share experiences with uh, with the listeners. Um, if you are interested in the company or the products, then um, you go to pointofpro.com. That's our website. It uh, contains information, of course, about the product, but also a lot of things about uh, digitization of, of professional services. Um, so, um, yeah, check it out. And last words, maybe about, uh, again, about this democratization. Um, it's... Um, uh, we want to democratize um, the um, the tools that are needed um, to automate uh, advice. But as a result of that, I mean, that's for the ones that give the advice, but you have also the one that receive the advice. Um, there we want really to, to democratize um, the professional advice itself, um, because by the fact that there is so many manual work involved, labor, um, professional service is quite expensive, um, like um, financial services or um, yeah, specialized legal services, quite expensive. And by digitizing, it will also become more affordable for the, the one that uh, yeah, receives um, the, uh, the, um, the advice. For example, in the US, we have a, like an ex-private banker who is used, using our software to give uh, financial advice, um, like digital financial advice. But then it can be, um, I mean, there's no threshold anymore. Like for to go to a private bank, you need, I don't know, 500,000 or 1 million in, in net assets. Um, but to get digital advice, um, you you don't need um, this kind. And it's open for almost everybody. So that's a, an example of democratization. So yes, it was a pleasure, John. Um, thank you for having me and, and hope um, to um, to hear from you again in the future. Thank you, Stefan. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Stefan and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe 
and that you have a great week.